Hi everyone, if you're an existing subscriber, hello and welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, hello, welcome and why not hit subscribe now? I'm Alicia Vittoria Keane and I've been interviewing inspirational people and businesses to find out how and why they inspire others. This week, I interviewed Melissa Thorpe. Here's how it went. <laughs> Um, so my name is Melissa Thorpe, or Mel, as most people call me, and I am a freelance um, TV assistant producer. That's pretty cool. So how did you get into doing that? Very long story short, my sister um, has severe cerebral palsy. So, I mean, way back when, I think probably about 2007, for various reasons, she basically appeared on This Morning, and I think it was called GMTV back then, it's Good Morning Britain now. Um, and I must have been about 12, and I went up to the studios with her, and I got to go in the green room, and they let me go in the gallery, which is where kind of all the producers and directors sit and stuff. So I was really young at that point, but I saw it and I was like, this is really really cool I want to work somewhere like this and that was kind of it really so then I went through school and um went to sixth form did media at sixth form um I just kind of always had that, that kind of was always in the back of my mind it was never really anything else from that point it was always like oh, I want to work in tv so here I am <laughs> <laughs> so as you just mentioned you went to sixth form studied media what was your next step from there did you have to go to university so I applied for university. I, I was at sixth form. I did media at sixth form, but alongside media, I did philosophy and ethics and English as well. So I was always very much kind of keeping my options open just in case I wanted to kind of go down a different avenue or try a different industry or something. And I got into university, but decided to defer my year, actually, because um, I thought... I kind of knew TV was quite an experience-based industry rather than a qualification-based industry. So I deferred my year at university and kind of went straight into work. So I started just doing some runner jobs as, um, as work experience and then basically didn't go to uni and then carried on working. So uni kind of went out the window because I'd, I'd started working kind of, and I was 18 at this point. I was quite young really for, for a being in the industry already but yeah I just kind of then carried on I didn't I then kind of realized I didn't need to go to uni so I then didn't and carried on and yeah so that's kind of yeah it just never happened really so it's in a way it's a good job that you never did go to uni you did take that leap to take that year out yeah yeah it was it turned out to be kind of the best thing that happened I think my university then ended up dropping the course that I then applied for so it's kind of all like it was weirdly like meant to be that I was obviously not meant to go so yeah it was um yeah worked out well <laughs> sounds like it did and I'm personally like a big believer in fate so sounds like it did how did you get them like those runner jobs like for someone who's watching this how do you become a runner so I did a lot of research I did there's there's kind of lots of different websites some not so good some that are very good I also then the more research I did found out that the Facebook was a really really good tool I mean it still is now even for me to find a job now Facebook is is a great tool for connecting and um, with people in the industry so I found out that there was Facebook groups that advertise for runners and I suppose I was quite headstrong and consistent in the fact that I was like this is what I want to do so um it's such a kind of very popular industry for people to work in because it's really fun and you kind of get to do really amazing things so you'll be applying for runner jobs alongside probably hundreds of other people probably and you'd apply for 20 30 40 50 runner like one day runner jobs and you'd apply for the for loads and you wouldn't get a reply but I suppose I was quite headstrong in that I was like I'm just going to keep applying and one will reply at some point I was then quite lucky that I have a cousin that basically works in, in the industry already and there was I think my first was this my first runner job she had um there was a dropout or something I can't really remember but I ended up doing work experience on on a show that doesn't exist anymore but it's called sweat the small stuff um yeah. nick grimshaw used to host it yeah 
and I ended up, I think a spot opened or so, I can't really remember the details, but something happened that meant that I um, was able to fill that work experience spot. And then at the same time, I, I was then just, just carrying on applying just and just kind of wasn't worried if I didn't get a reply. I just thought if I just keep trying and keep just taking any opportunity that came up, I I think I did also another work experience doing some transcribing and logging, which is where you basically listen to uh, like an interview, like like what we're doing now, um, and just type everything up. And I think I did some work experience doing that as well. So it just started to show on my CV that I was kind of had an interest or had like a little bit of an experience. And as soon as you kind of have that interest evidence I suppose on your CV that's when the ball started rolling a little bit but it was just being really consistent and kind of not worrying if I didn't get a reply because one one person will and as soon as that one person will then you've got something else to put in your CV and then when you apply for the next thing they've seen that you've got something there already so it was just being really consistent and not worrying if no one replied or you didn't get an answer from anyone for a few months I suppose it was just being consistent and that was definitely the thing that worked for me. Would you say it was like a lot of self-belief then that kind of kept you going that you knew one day you would get there you knew that they were going to reply whereas a lot of people would get a bit down by that? I think so I've always had this belief that if you want to do something you can do it like I've always had that belief that okay, if I want to do something or, or someone else wants to go and do something, I'm like, we'll go and do it then. I've got, like if someone, if someone else has done it before, then why can't you go and do it? So that was always what was in my head. I was like, if I want to do this, there's a way that I can do this. So I think it was, a, yeah, I suppose it is self-belief to say, do you know what? I can do this. I can break into the industry. I know I've hopefully got this, maybe naively, but <laughs> maybe I've got the skills to go and do um do that do that role and work within the industry and fit in in that industry um but I suppose yeah it was a bit of self-belief but also I suppose maybe a bit of I don't know maybe a bit naively thought but um I yeah I really believe that if if you want to do something you can you'll find a way to do it which I suppose then comes back to the whole fate scenario that if it's meant to be it will be as well how did you stand out against those hundreds of people what do you think made you stand out was it the experience? Interesting question. I think I was very aware that a CV was the first thing that people were going to get in that I, I, I suppose I'm quite chatty. Like I can, I can talk to quite a lot of people. I've, I've always been quite bubbly. Whenever I grew up, I've never had a problem talking to people. So it was almost once I got an interview, I was kind of like, well, if I, did, if, if I went to a job and had an interview for it, if I didn't get the job, I was kind of like, well, I wasn't the right fit that's fine but I think from a CV point of view I was very aware that that companies would be having and I'm sure this is with with many industries as well but I was very aware that companies were would be reading hundreds of CVs that almost say the same thing so I was very aware of on my CV even when I was very early days and didn't have much experience or if any experience I was very aware of kind of tailoring my CV to show that I had an interest or I'd done a bit of work. I think I did some uh, work experience with the local paper or something when I was in, at school. And I probably in reality now probably think it's, it's nothing. At the time, it was just using anything I had to show that I had an interest or had something that might be seen above someone else I was just really aware of, of showing that interest and that passion and, and that enthusiasm through CV even if I didn't have much experience because I just knew that they would be having as, as I said I suppose of every job CV after CV after CV and I wanted to show that I really wanted to be in this industry and had an interest for it rather than just thinking oh Oh, well, I'm working telling. It was, it was, I wanted to prove that I was I, I different. I don't know. <laughs> but I wanted to prove that I, I kind of had that interest already. I wasn't just doing it on a whim, I suppose. So yeah, that was what I always had in the back of my head whenever I was uh, kind of applying for anything. Also, you've worked on quite a few shows. Can you just kind of tell us which shows you've worked on? Yeah, so I am, I'm currently working on The Voice. 
which is really exciting. I'm on my second series with The Voice now. So I've done series nine and we're now working on series 10, which is super exciting. I have previously to The Voice, I worked on three consecutive series of The Only Way is Essex and I'm an Essex girl. So I love doing that one as well. <laughs> kind of grew up watching that show and then ended up working on it, which is, which is really cool. But then I kind of, one of my first jobs I ever did was Quiz Show The Chase, which is huge everyone watches the chase it's massive I kind of probably didn't realize how massive it was before I worked on it really and I'd be like oh yeah I worked on the chase and everyone's like we love the chase so yeah that was that was kind of one of my first kind of big jobs I suppose that I that I did when I was first a runner and um and then as a junior researcher as well I worked on the chase I've worked on couples come dine with me I mean really early days I was a day runner back on Celebrity Juice I did a couple of series on that so yeah I've done uh, quite a bit <laughs> which is fun we're all freelance in the industry so we kind of get put on on contracts of varying lengths but we you kind of find that you move in the same circles as as the same similar people so you're kind of regularly working with people that you you know or know of or are friends of friends or something which is really nice but it obviously because we're freelance it means we move around a lot which is great I love it personally because it's always something different so yeah that's kind of a, a little snapshot of what, <laughs> what I've done really fantastic so with being freelance how does that work is it the case You've always got a job? Is it the case that someone could come in and snap it up as such? How does it work? So usually you'll get put on a contract. Now, when I say for varying lengths, it could be two weeks, six weeks, three months, nine months. So it really depends. The TV industry goes quite quiet over the Christmas period. So normally around December till about February, there's less jobs around than there would say in, in July. It's, it's just kind of how the industry works. They go quiet over sort of Christmas, uh, early New Year. But yeah, so it's kind of, you kind of just have to, to so once you cut, start coming to the end of the contract, whether that's a six week contract that you're on or a three month contract that you're on, once you kind of start heading to the end of that contract, you're like, right, I need a job. So whether that's that you start looking on various Facebook groups that are out there or messaging your friends and being like, guys, what show are you on? Do they need a researcher or something? So you have to be quite resourceful, I suppose, when you're looking for a job, because whenever you're coming to an end of a contract, you've got to be quite active in looking for that. Then that next job might not fall in your lap. You might have to actively go out and search that job. And obviously the aim is to be in fairly consistent work, as, as we all want. But, but yeah, so you do have to be quite active and resourceful. Once you start coming to that end of your contract, you have to be quite aware and be like, right, OK, I'm going to put a status out there to say I'm available in two weeks time and um but that's kind of the nature of the industry I think you either get on with that style of working or you don't I personally really thrive in like variety. I mean sometimes it, don't get me wrong sometimes it can be like oh I've not got a job in a few weeks time but I really enjoy kind of moving from a different team to a completely different so so TOWIE's obviously reality tv and the voice is a kind of a big entertainment show so I love kind of going from a different format show to a different team, which, which is kind of uh, obviously Towie's location based, the voice is studio based. So it's, re I really love that kind of that change, which is, which is really fun. But you do have every so often, you do have that, uh, that panic when you come to an end of contract and you don't have a job lined up and you're like, Oh God, I've not got a job, but, uh, <laughs> but it's just the nature of the industry. You kind of get used to it. And I think I've been working in TV since sort of 26, now, and you, I think the longer you stay in the industry the more you kind of get used to it and you don't have as much I mean I definitely panicked more when I first started working in the industry than I do now whereas now I'm a bit calmer about it I'm like a job will come along it'll be fine I have a few weeks off I'll have a few weeks off it's fine <laughs> whereas a few years ago I probably wouldn't have been that calm about it but you, you do just kind of get used to the the nature nature of the beast I suppose but, um, but yeah so you have to be very proactive yeah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> For some people, that would be really, really daunting, especially if they're like trying to get into the industry because nothing's really guaranteed. What would you say to them? I think it's probably the same as, uh, as what I did when I was first getting into the industry. It's just being really consistent. 
and being aware that every person that you meet so when you do that first runner job that person might give you a job in two years time so you've just got to be really aware every person that you meet every whether you think they they might be a contact that you need or not like just be aware of them and make them aware of what you want to do and where you want to go and and be friends with them on Facebook when you leave or something and it's just being really consistent and it's also kind of not being worried about being annoying I suppose or not necessarily annoying but not being worried about emailing someone out the blue and being like hey I'm free in three weeks time do you know of anything coming up because at the end of the day everyone that's kind of in the industry they've been you like mm -hmm. I've been a runner that's kind of first breaking into the industry, a producer that I might be going to being like, hey, do you know of any jobs coming up? They've been me as a researcher. So I think it's being aware that everyone's been you at that, at that stage. Everyone's been uh, that person trying to break into the industry or being a, a, a researcher that's oh, just a runner that's just been promoted to a researcher and they're looking for their second researcher job or something. We've always we've all been that person. So it's I think it's not it's being really consistent, keeping those connections that you've made as a runner. I, I mean, I was a runner for two years, I think, in total. I day ran for about a year, but I was a lot younger. I day ran for about for about a year. And then I I had contracts as a runner for about a year. And that was pr almost probably the most valuable time because I was making tea for everyone and making photocopies. And But I was talking to everyone on the crew, obviously, because I'm chatty as well, but making friends with everyone and like telling everyone that, oh, this is what I'm doing next. And, and that was almost such a valuable time for my career. And I think it's it's such a don't kind of take that time for granted some people are like oh I'm so fed up of making tea but that person that you're making a cup of tea for might give you a job in a year's time or give you your promotion in a year's time so it's kind of really embracing that time that you've kind of first come into the industry and being aware of making those contacts but then also kind of staying really consistent with it I suppose and not being afraid to reach out to people because they've all, they've been you they've kind of been at the same stage you've been at so I suppose in reality about networking you yeah. have also recently got a new job I have so <laughs> explain so I mean as when you first go into tv so everyone kind of or, or the most normal route into TV is you start off as a runner um, and then there's kind of two, uh, well, I suppose there's kind of two kind of routes you can go to. One is what we call editorial and one is kind of production. Okay. So along the production point of view is where you go from a runner to kind of a production secretary, production coordinator, production manager. Um, and that's when you kind of very much deal with the kind of logistics, budgets, planning, call sheets, that side of things. Um, and then we've kind of got the editorial side, which is where you go from runner, junior researcher, researcher, assistant producer, producer. Um, and that's where you kind of are a little bit more creatively involved in the show. That was kind of the route I decided to go down. So I've been a researcher or I had been a researcher for a little while. And I'd been with The Voice since, oh God, summer last year is, is um, I've been with The Voice. I've been in TV terms. I've been with The Voice for quite a long time. That's, that's a, yeah. The, the time that I've been with The Voice is, is quite a long time for, for TV terms. And yeah, I kind of within the show, I finished series nine and um, they kept me on and set me up to assistant. I went from researcher in series nine and then series 10, I'm now an assistant producer. So yeah, very exciting. <laughs> well, fantastic. Well done. Is your next step then to get up to producer level? Yeah, that was, that's kind of, it might would be my next step would be up there so there's no real rhyme or kind of reason as to how long you stay at, at, at a level for I would probably be looking to stay at an assistant producer for two three years maybe four it, it really kind of depends on what kind of show you want to work on I've obviously I really like working on kind of reality and, and big entertainment shows they're the shows that I really enjoy working on so that would be kind of the route that I would want to go forward and those are the kind of shows that I would want to carry on working on so 
but again, if I decided that I wanted to go into documentaries and factual, then I'd kind of, that might take me a little bit longer to get up to, to a producer because I've not previously worked in that kind of show. So yeah, that's, that would kind of be my next step, but a little way off at the moment. Um, you kind of have to co consolidate at each, each kind of level um, before you go up. So you, and, and I very much, I think because I started in the industry so young, I'm in a very fortunate position in that I kind of don't, necessarily have to rush I suppose up the the levels I I'm, can kind of I've got time to kind of sit a little bit I suppose at, at each each level I've, I've got time to sit at, at an assistant producer and make sure that I've kind of experienced all the shows that I want to experience and and all the job roles that I want to experience um as as an assistant producer so then I know when I step up to a producer I've kind of got all of the experience that I know I need already so i um, but don't get me wrong I'm in a very lu luxurious position to to kind of be able to have that time to not have to rush I suppose I um I can pick and choose I suppose shows that I want to work on and make sure I get the experience that I want so I know I can go forward and be the best producer that I I can be so yeah that makes a lot of sense once you become an assistant producer and then a producer do you then tend to stick to the same show or can you still move about? How does that work? So I think normally once you go into the industry, you kind of find your your fit, I suppose. You, you find the shows that you enjoy working on and enjoy doing. So um, I, as I said, I, I really enjoy working on reality and entertainment. That, that's kind of where, I, that's, that's what, what I enjoy. Um, so I think quite early on you find out the type of show that you enjoy and then you just kind of stick to that really but there's no as I said like if you want if I got to this point I thought you know what I actually I want to go and work in factual and do documentaries that's not that's not impossible I can absolutely cross over and do that I obviously wouldn't necessarily because I've worked in reality factual uh, factual entertainment which is kind of the, the couples come down with me that that's classes factual entertainment and entertainment because I've worked in those kind of three genres they're the genres I've obviously got the most contact in so to switch over to something like a like a documentary would obviously not impossible but it would be just that little bit more challenging just because I don't really know that many people that work in that side of the industry obviously the people that I I know and, and work with are in the genres that I'm currently working in so it's not as I said it's, it's kind of up to you if you can chop and change if you want but I think from personal experience I think you find out quite early what what kind of thing you want to do and then you kind of stick stick with that and uh, as you kind of go go up the ranks I suppose. <laughs> so there's both a lot of it's not what you know it's who you know as well as well that's yeah. fantastic thank you very much for sharing all that with us finally I have 10 very quick questions. I'm ready. Number one favorite tv show you've ever worked on? Favorite TV show I've ever worked on? I'm going to say The Voice because I'm currently working on it and I love it. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Fruit or veg? Veg. Ooh. Horses or TV? Horses. How come you choose horses? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I think because horses have always been my hobby and oh I don't know I don't know they're so hard because I don't know I feel like because horses is my I suppose I I interpreted that as like watching tv or like riding horses so I think as I kind of I see tv as like work not as not as I know that sounds awful I don't necessarily like watch tv watch I don't get that much time to watch tv basically I work on it but I don't get that much time to watch it so I think Whereas, because because I spend any free time that I've got kind of doing the horses and I teach as well. So I kind of do that. So I think that's, that's why, because <laughs> I kind of interpreted that as like watching TV or yeah. riding horses. <laughs> so that's where I went with that one. <laughs> yeah, no, that was cool. <laughs> Wanted to find catch her out, so good. What's the longest ever working day you've ever done? Oh, I would say, so I work at Glastonbury every year. And I would say, I think one year I did quarter to four in the morning till around midnight. So what How? was that? I don't know what that is. Long time. Hours? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
yeah, a long time, basically. So, um, yeah, that's probably my longest. <laughs> What's one of your most interesting facts about you? Oh, uh, I only got a plane on a plane for the first time in 2018. No, oh, really? Plane yeah. How did you find it? Fine, and I flew on my own as well. Okay. But everyone find so I was twenty two. Is that right? Yeah, twenty two, and I hadn't been on a plane before. So yeah, interesting fact. It's quite interesting. <laughs> I don't think that's the most interesting, but it's interesting. <laughs> What's your biggest tip you would share for someone wanting to get into the same industry? Make contacts and be consistent. Cool. Biggest achievement. I think for me personally becoming an assistant producer at 24 that I was really quite proud of myself for doing that yeah I'm gonna say it I'm gonna back myself I was proud of that yeah no you should be proud of yourself very well done and final question jelly or ice cream or oh, ice cream every time well fantastic thank you very much no problem that interview just goes to show that if you want something enough then what you need to do is you need to go out and look for opportunities. The opportunities won't necessarily come to you, so you need to put yourself out there and make sure that you're showing others exactly what you are you're doing and where you want to achieve. You should always aspire to be your best self. And like Melissa was saying, she went out, she joined Facebook groups, she ensured that people knew who she was so that she would get work and not just be swept under the carpet. You can follow Melissa at the links here. If you have someone that inspires you, comment below. I'm always so interested to find out who others find inspirational. Likewise, if you have an inspirational story to tell, comment below, drop me a message on social media, or even drop me an email. On Sunday at four o'clock, I'll be speaking with 2016 Britain's Got Talent winner, Richard Jones. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, Comment below, let me know what you think, and don't forget to hit subscribe. See you all on Sunday. See you later.